a little bit chilly today in London, but <clears throat> we're going to look a little bit at the uh, FIDE chess candidates 2024. And particularly this one drew my attention because it's um, because it's a night off, because it's a Sicilian night off. You play this to win. He kind of wants to win, and I like this this that this combative, belligerent uh, approach to chess. And uh, this is a very like unusual type of Sicilian. I mean, uh, yeah, Sicil I mean H five. That's a. Uh, and bishop c4 now, play, I mean, last move of Fabi, Fabi's last move. And now um, I really wonder uh, what, what can black play here? What exactly you're supposed to be doing? Uh, I guess you could play b5, I guess you can play queen, I guess you can play e6. I guess all these moves can be played. And uh, these are the candidate moves I would be considering. Queen c7, you just hit the bishop directly. Probably bishop's going to go on b3. Um, and Fabio also wants to play quite seriously a combative. He played rook to g. Um, f3, g4 springs to mind. Does he want to play the structure with bishop e3, queen d2, like the Yugoslav type? I may say that it's with the f3, uh, bishop e3, queen d2, castle long. So that might be one possible setup here for Fabi. One possible setup here. Right. So I'm not. I'm not fully. Com I'm. Uh, I, I. I can't guarantee I'm going to be staying for the next four hours online. I'm not having any type of contract with anyone. So. <clears throat> I'll stay as much as I can comfortably be talking to you guys and uh, friendly noticing stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm giving you maybe maybe one hour more or less, and um, it depends on our friends as well. Made myself a cup of strong coffee now, and uh, yeah, so that's what I think the candidate moves the plan for black and for white. Now we'll see, we'll see, we'll see uh, what Black decides to do. I like all the three moves I've highlighted. I think there are theoretical approaches here for Black. I'm myself a Sicilian player, and um, that's what I know to being good to playing in this position here. B5, it's a very common approach here. B5, uh, Bishop B3, Queen C7 also being played. Queen c7 and e6 as well. Now Ali Reza wants to win. He wants to attack. Uh, g6, um, interesting deployment here. I would have expected b5 or this play this or this. g6, sort of like a hybrid something here. How do you call this? A Dragodorf or something, right? It's a Nidorf and Dragon or something. Um, Uh, very passionate. It's gonna be very challenging. I, I I already love it. I think I think I didn't look at other games as of yet because I'm really keen on this one. Not because I love very much playing the Sicilian myself anyway. So I I think it's a great opportunity to learning. Now that's all right, Simpson. We all want to do exactly the same stuff. So G six. Thanks, Senior, my friend. So g6 means that normally bishop wants to go to g7. Now there is a big question mark if we are going to castle short or not at all. So let's just let's just uh, wait and see. Reason being, you could expect probably uh, some f3, some f3, some g. Let's see how it's going to happen next. So g6 means very likely you're going to have a bishop g7. You're going to have bishop g7. You're going to have a b5. Very likely. Some knight bd7, some bishop b7. Uh, f3 for white, bishop e3, queen d2. That's that's the normal stuff you're going to be seeing. Of course, at b5, you're going to play bishop b3, right? So that's what normally happens. And castle long for white. In the Yugoslav attack, that's exactly what white plays. And uh, okay, 
And you know what's cool about this kind of setup with g6 and h5? Normally in the Yugoslav, when you get bishop d2, queen, uh, bishop e3, queen d2, you normally go for trading or getting your bishop on h6. But since you played h5 and g6, after battery, bishop e3, queen d2, there is no bishop h6 happening. And if memory serves well, I think I've seen a game. Uh, Dominguez Perez playing with white something very very similar against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen played this kind of Dragodorf himself with h5 g6. So bishop g7 as we very well said now he developed well of course previously Fabi developed bishop to g5 bishop g7 now we might see queen d2 we might see very well that makes a lot of sense and that's again that is something that normally happens for white and the sicilians you're going to see queen d2 and probably f3 as well and i'll tell you something if black decides to cancel but i'm not sure they're going to do this yet so if black decides to cancel then you might you might explore bishop page six after of course rook had disappeared that is but let's take a step by step uh fabi stud Candidate moves in my from my point of view f3 f3 and queen d2 didn't I say it didn't I say it? queen d2 queen d2 uh, not just the battery itself with the queen and bishop but also castle long so that's very important to understand that we may want to do castle long and opposite side castling normally in the dragon you have the opposite side castling and quite quite ferocious and aggressive and exciting game uh, we are about to be witnessing here my friends and probably f3 because you want to take the g4 away from black so probably we're going to see f3 at some point now black to play uh candidate moves b5 queen c7 uh e6 i'm not sure about e6 i may have some reservations uh, b5 could be something though and queen c7 it could be knight bd7 as well so let me just do it again b5 knight bd7 uh, queen c7 that might be and it could be queen a5 and uh, i'm not sure probably you can probably you can uh castle king side i'm not sure castle king side I'm not sure just yet. Probably knight bd7, b5 first, and he's gonna be delaying the castle. Uh, white can only do castle long, but when you do b5, you're forcing bishop c4 to b3, and of course you're gonna be attacking with a and b towards uh, white castle king if they do castle long. Uh, let's see. That's gonna be very exciting. Hello, uh, Arga no idea let's go have a look at that one that's another fabulous game and i'd love to watch them all simultaneously that is well we can watch them all simultaneously but uh i can't have a prediction i think they both want to win this evening aga both of them want to win and understandably so understand what they play Re lopez morphe defense uh cozio defense okay they always have a name for everything don't they Whose turn is it? Gukesh. What springs to bite here? Castle short? Maybe. D6? Maybe. Um, B5? B5? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, doable, B5. Bishop F6? Bishop F6? I'm not sure. A uh, castle kingside? Perhaps. Mm. what other stuff could be happening here queen g3 hello mls good to see you good to see you good to see you it is blackstone to play by the way blackstone to play now so yeah queen g3 if black castle short yes you're talking about white queen g3 and i think it makes sense if black castle short queen g3 and probably you uh, you aiming to do bishop h6 medium term you would like to play that one as well so that could be the case indeed 
Could be, could be. Um, Gukesh takes a little bit of time here. This is just move number nine for Black. Absolutely, that makes sense. Well, uh, what you said makes sense. Uh, I uh, I subscribe to the same idea. Uh, if castle short, queen g3 for white makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Again, maybe some d6, uh, b5. Uh, that could be also some candidate moves here. I thought Gukesh, like, I mean, if you had like an in depth uh, preparation here, probably you would just go moving by now, right? Either Gukesh tries to refresh memory or he tries to reconstruct the theoretical, or I don't know. Maybe he is a bit concerned about short castling, given the idea that me, uh, an MLS just talked about. So, quick G3, maybe, maybe he's actually a little bit doubting. Hello, Sadve, good to see you, man. Thanks for visiting. Hmm. That's another exciting game we're going to see together, guys. Um, but I'm super keen on Ali Reza because he plays a Sicilian. And it's it's a Dragodorf he plays. He plays a mix. Have you seen that MLS? He plays a mix um, between a hybrid. A hybrid in between the Nidorf and the Dragon. I mean, that's probably one of the most exciting games you're going to see this evening, guys. Or oh, this morning depends where you are on the planet, of course. Um, in the um, in the Sicilian Dragons U Yugoslav, you get the structure with the F3 and the battery here. And normally the H pawn is on H7. That's why White plays Bishop H6. But you can't play Bishop H6 here. <laughs> you can't play it because Black had pushed H pawn, and they haven't castled, so you can't do it. And Ali Reza still didn't move. I did draw a couple of yellow arrows here that shows my uh, candidate moves that I'd be ready to play with black. He didn't do nothing just yet. Uh, I'm going to leave the arrows like this. We're going to go peruse throughout the games and we're going to be coming back to see what these guys did. Uh, Ali Reza might be an orthodox, but he does a Dragodorf, which is uh, known uh, in the world of chess, uh, Dragodorf. It's not a, it's not a, it is unexpected, but it's incredibly valid. Again, Magnus Carlsen played it against uh, uh, Dominguez Perez, and he is not the only one. I remember precisely I've seen a game that he played, and he won with black. So yeah, that's all right. You, 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 you're more than welcome, uh, my friend via kick.com x1. You're more than welcome to um, do the chess stuff here with us. Okay, let's go and look at the other guys, and uh, I'm uh, very curious what Ali Reza chooses to play. Really, really, really curious. Uh, I would go b5 here. I, I would just go b5. b5, knight bd7, bishop b7. So let me just draw another arrow. Of course, you can't play bishop b7 now, but b5 definitely vacates the uh, b7 for the bishop. And knight bd7. Knight bd7, knight bd7, then the knight on bd7 can jump potentially to c5 and stuff, attacking the bishop on b3, which will retreat if b5 happens. Bishop b3, we're going to see that one as well. So let's go and see some other guys now. So uh, we've seen a bit Gukesh, Ali Reza, Prague and Vidit. Okay, let's have a look at these guys. Uh, Vidit's turn, and p normally, 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 everybody knows that Vidit takes his time. Vidit loves to think a lot before he moves right from the very start. He does take his time. So, yeah, he's going to get low on time, right? We all know that. We all know that. They play the real Lopez Berlin defense. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, knight d2, last move of Prague. What do you do? Castle short, right? Castle short, knight f6. What's the thing? Uh, one of these two, unless you want to go differently here. Um, uh, castle short, right? Maybe I am sometimes. Um, if castle short, does white castle short as well? Question would be, I guess you want to push the F pawn, right? I guess you want to push the F. So, castle short, castle short. Well... Black can push the F2. 
and then white can push the f2. So if you castle short, you may want to push the pawn. Can you do castle long for white, I wonder? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Castle short, I think it's better. Castle short. Then you're having this guy. Maybe you want to get rid of the bishop. I don't know. Just saying. So knight to c5 actually being played. This guy is ready to go. Where exactly? Bishop e6 springs to mind. Probably bishop e6. Maybe, maybe, maybe Vidit actually is going to do castle long. Maybe he's going to castle long. So actually you don't know. And he's not telegraphing to Prague exactly. I mean, you, after you play bishop e6, he can go both ways. And white itself can go both ways, you so you know, so you so they could do castle long or short. No one had castle yet. We're still in the opening stage. Knight c5. I'm not sure you should take here because you give black in tremendous power with the uh, bishop b6 f2. Can that be alienated later? So takes takes and this. Can we do this? Mm, then they're going to be dropping, and then you take. Then they take. They have the a then. Nah, I'm not sure you're going to take. So probably you're going to castle. I don't know what he's going to do. Castle short. We are going to find out, guys. Nice, this pawn here that does not allow the knight on c3 to do anything. Central move. Central pawn d4. I'm not convinced. Probably you kind of can. Or maybe knight c4. Or maybe knight c4. That might be another idea. We're going to see about this one. Knight b3, d4. Yeah, that could be played as well. Yes. When you do d4, you have to be aware that after they take... Well, you're going to take back. I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're going to be hitting g7, and they're going to be having their bishop active and stuff. But I'm not sure black's going to take, though. Probably they're going to move the knight or something, d4. Are they going to take? I'm not sure. Or maybe bishop b6, maybe castle long. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? There are quite a few options here. There are quite a few options. So let's find out. Mm. I think I would go knight c4 here. I like to take more space if possible. I like go forwards, you know. Knight b3, probably that's playable. I prefer knight c4. Secretly, I, I'm keen on getting rid of this bishop. Secretly. So let's find out. We will see this if it goes in this fashion. Next game, guys. Uh, Hikaru. Hey, yeah, I've just seen that Ali Reza played Queen A5. I did say about Queen A5, but I wasn't very keen on that one. Hikaru White, a boss of black here. A5 uh, by black. Uh, Hikaru Castle. Everyone castled. Everyone castled. Well, can't you just develop your guys first and then uh, we'll take it from there? Can't we just develop? If G5... Nah, they don't do that. You can even take, take, take. I'm not sure that's the most objectively sound option here. But it feels weird to do G5, right? Mm, I don't know. First thing first, let's just get the knight on D2. Then maybe we play B3. I'm not sure, maybe not. Okay, so knight e2, knight f, knight e. Then knight here. I know it's a long way, but... So knight d, knight f, knight e. You know, this guy would be attackable because the knight is being pinned by the bishop. So I guess you can play a little bit of uh, shuffling here of the knight. Knight e2, knight f, knight e, knight f again. Sorry, knight e to attack this guy here. So that might be interesting. Interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Where does black going to get the bishop? You can't go f5. You could go e6, but it's a bit painful. It's a bit passive. But after all, yeah, you just develop. You just develop. So bishop e6 for black, but white. Probably knight e2, right? Probably knight e2. And I'm very, very keen. Just briefly, let me go very quickly to... Fabi and Ali Reza. Because Ali Reza went for Queen A5. I would have expected him to play exactly the moves I highlighted. B5, Knight Bd7, this kind of stuff. But he went Queen A5. He went Queen A5, okay. Uh, 
What happens if you do knight d5, I wonder? I really wonder what do you do after knight d5. I guess queen takes. Can white do knight d5? Well, they kind of can. Then queen takes. Check. You're going to be taking back with the bishop, so knight d5, queen takes. Does that get a does that get a draw now? Is he getting drawish? Knight d5, queen takes, bishop takes. Black's turn. Black takes. Mm, bishop takes. And then what? I seriously seriously inquire about knight d5. It could be, it could be, it could be. A3 for B, I understand. Uh huh. Hmm. How are you going to castle if you do A3, Sadvik? I don't see it's not doable. I just wonder about a king's position long term. Uh, you're going to keep the king on E5, I understand, right? You're going to keep the king here. And if you do a3, b, uh, would you still castle? I mean, this guy is quite a nightmare. The bishop in this dragon or dragodorf is quite a is quite a nightmare on the g7, b2 diagonal. So you've got to be careful about that guy. You're going to be castling. You're going to be not castling. a3, I understand. I'm not sure. Maybe knight b3, Sadvik. If you want to do something, maybe knight b3 is one option here. Well, maybe there is others for sure, but that one springs to mind. It could be. I'm seriously considering knight d5, really. Right? Knight e5, queen takes, bishop takes. No, you're dropping this guy, though. Doesn't work. Knight d5, queen takes, bishop takes. You're dropping this guy, but actually it's the fork here, so you have to take. So actually it works. Knight e5, queen takes, bishop takes. You gotta take the knight because you're gonna get forked here on c7. So knight takes, bishop takes, pressure on b7, quite nice. How are you gonna do this? Uh, we'll see. After knight d5, queen d2, bishop d, you want to take on e and getting... Uh, yep, but c6 is being attacked twice, MLS. So if I'm correct, uh, black's going to lose a pawn on c6? Because knight's going to take pawn takes, bishop takes, check, and you lose the rook, MLS, am I correct? So knight d5, queen takes, bishop takes... Knight takes, bishop takes. Oh, is the knight hanging though? The knight on d4 hanging, MLS. Knight d2, uh, queen takes, bishop takes. Knight takes. This guy's hanging. It's not working, knight d5. The, the knight on d4 is hanging. Bishop attacks it. So it's not working. That's why he played it. I was wondering why did he do it, but knight d5 is not working. For white is not working for white. It's just simply not working. And Ali Reza played it knowing, of course, he's a super grandmaster, like all the guys playing this evening there. Uh, so it doesn't work, knight d5. For this very reason we specified. It's not working. You've got to figure out something else. So, can we throw an F3? Well, probably you can. Probably you can. It, like, uh, it doesn't make any sense to drop the bishop back on E3, right? I mean, it's just ridiculous. You play bishop G5, you don't have to play bishop E3. It's just a bit ridiculous. So, f3? That's cool. I like it. It's brilliant. I love this game. I think I like this game more than 
because I'm being biased, I love the. I'm very much interested in the Sicilians, the Nidovs, the uh, Dragodovs, Sicilian, and I am biased indeed. That is why I'm uh, maybe a bit more a bit more inclined for this game this evening. That doesn't mean we're gonna we're not gonna be looking at the other games, but this one specific. I mean, this one particularly grabs my attention, gets my attention a bit more. Because I want to see Super Grandmasters playing Sicilian. That is the best reason, you know. That's that's that that's the bigger reason. I want to see these guys playing Sicilian. Very much interested. Very much, especially this type of Dragodov. Fabulous game. Uh, we're gonna find out. Uh, F three. I guess you can. Castle Long feels weird. Bishop B three. That can be played. Just just. Uh, Preemptively, you know that uh, B uh, B five is going to happen. It's not preemptive; it's uh, prophylactic. Prophylactic. I think that's the correct term. So, F three just to go for the Yugoslav structure, or Bishop B three, uh, anticipating B five. So just you know, save yourself, save yourself a little bit of tempo. Go Bishop B three, maybe, maybe. So that's what I'm uh, looking at. So let's go watch the other guys. Now, I think I missed Gukesh's game. I skipped Gukesh's game because I was biased, as I said. Not that that's not important. Of course it is. Uh, what did we see last time? Castle Short, MLS. Remember, we discussed. I left the arrows on the screen. So now we can see the arrows that we discussed. Castle Short. And instead of queen g3, the move you suggested, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Although, it might have been queen g3, bishop d6. It's, I'm not sure. Um, probably that's playable. Anyway, knight to d. Wants to get rid of this guy. That guy is cool. You want to get them off? b5? Heck, you could take with tempo, right? You could take knight e7 check. But he didn't. Play bishop b3. And now Gukesh again. Gukesh again. Well, you've got bishop b7, right? You've got bishop b7. Heck, uh, then could be c3, this guy here. Okay, knight a5, getting this bishop out for good. This bishop is going to disappear. Bishop b3 is too dangerous. And knight a5 wants to make sure that the bishop on b3 no longer exists. So get rid of the opponent's most curious pieces. Uh, Bishop b3 is a problem. So they're going to take him. Bishop going to be removed. Whatever you do, the bishop is going to disappear. Okay. Uh, what do you do? Knight takes. Queen takes. And then I don't know. Uh, you play this. Then they're going to take. Then you take with a. Then they play bishop b. And then you castle short, right? Maybe. Maybe. I would get rid of this bishop. I don't like this bishop. I think it's also a defender. I would like to get rid of them. I would like to get rid of them. And also, this is slightly concerning. They're going to be another fascinating game this evening, my friends. Yeah, Pomnishi white, Gukesh black. That's going to be interesting. We're going to love it. That's another game. These guys really want to win. Because they are like 5.5 each of them. So they kind of like getting on top of the leaderboard now. Whoever wins this evening amongst them two, in between them two. So they really want to, they really want to get this one. Uh, yeah, Queen G3, I think Sadvik was MLS said Queen G3 some time ago. Yeah, that's also his suggestion here. That makes sense. Queen G3 makes sense. Uh, if you consider that's one of them, but also there is a uh, double pressure on C7. So Queen G3 comes, it's a multi-purpose move. The move you guys suggested. Looks at C7. Double attack. And it looks at g7, especially bishop h6, if you have a chance to play it. So that's something. That is something indeed. 
Probably you can delay the castle and actually invest a little bit more in attacking. Hmm. Yes, it may very well be the case, MLS. That's exactly right. Opposite, opposite uh, color bishops, yes. We're going to see opposite color bishops. Yep. I guess bishop on e7 will be traded. But let's see uh, what white plays. Yeah, queen g3 makes a lot of sense to me as well. I don't think it's a bad move. It's a, I think it's an attacking move. I think it, uh, it's clearly attacking. It's attacking c7 and it definitely pressurizes g7. So I like it. That's good. So yeah. Let's find out what the guys are doing here. Queen g3, definitely a good stuff. If queen g3, what is uh, black playing? I mean, I'm trying to... I understand queen g3 and I think it's really good. Now just trying to figure out what is white supposed to do. S sorry, what is black supposed to defend? How do you play this? Queen g3. Um... It's not clear. Um, you got a defense c7 as well. What do you play? Bishop d6, yeah, bishop d6. Uh, bishop d6, and now it's getting really tactical. Bishop d6, can I push the pawn? Then we're going to have this. And then we might have this, or might have this. And the game is getting really tactical. Uh, I don't know. So maybe Ian delays it a bit more. Is he going to do H? Just asking for a friend. Is he going to play H to H4? Although it takes so long. I don't think so. Because it just takes too long. H4, H5, H6. It just takes a billion years. Well, it feels a little bit, um, feels a little bit uncalled. I don't know. So maybe not the H pawn now. You know that these guys love to surprise each other very much. So if it's not a blunder, they're going to be playing it uh, for the surprise effect on their opponents. Yeah, queen g3, bishop d6. I don't know what to say about this move. It is playable for sure. Maybe bishop d6 rather than... But then you're going to be trading. Mm. Bishop d2 is good and I did highlight it previously. I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would go g3, but I would go bishop d2. I did, uh, I did mention bishop d2. I like it. I love bishop d2. It's absolutely great. Uh, forces sort of, sort of makes, uh, makes black to take on b3, right? So you take with a. And also you might have, you might have some bishop c3 further on. So that's looking that's looking promising for white. So that's good. And lovely, absolutely lovely. Let's go to Alireza again. I'm so curious what these guys are playing in that Sicilian. Where were we? Here. What did Y play? Castle long. Castle long. That's something that happens a lot in Sicilian dragons. That happens very often. Castle long here. Uh nine C six, okay. Developing, developing White's turn now. What do you play? So I'm very much invested in watching Sicilians happening because I'm playing it myself, so... Dragodorf. Hybrid, hybrid. It's a hybrid in between Nidorf and Dragon. And yep, absolutely. There is one uh, stuff here we got to keep in mind, guys. An IC6 is not just a de simple developing move. If you do some, let me just give an example. If you play something like F3 now, just saying, if you do F3, it's going to happen this. Knight takes, and you're going to take, and then queen is going to take this guy. So if you're not paying attention, and if you just try to, uh, if you just try to rememorize stuff that might take place in this position, and you go with the relatively uneventful f3, I mean, you, you kind of like may want to do f3, but not now. 
because knight takes, then again, you kind of have to take back, right? And then queen takes g5, and you just lost the game. You lost the bishop, you lost the game. So you can't do f3 here. So you either take, or you play knight b3, or stuff like this. Uh, but let's see. Well, if you take, they are going to take with the B. That is certain, most certain, most certain. That's going to. But then you're going to give, uh, you're going to give Black the B file. So that is really interesting, really, really, really interesting. So let's see what's going to be here. Oh man, that was. I was really, really interested in seeing this guy's playing a Sicilian, and there you go. I think it's the second time in this field of candidates when they play Sicilian, right? Normally, you're gonna uh, you're gonna see tons of Spanish opening, tons of Ruy Lopez, like a lot of Ruy Lopez Berlin defense, a lot, like tons of Berlin defense every single time. Now we can uh, see something different. And very exciting. Bishop e3. Yeah, you could do bishop e3. But then again, it's that kind of move. If he needs, he's going to play it. It's that kind of move. I mean, you play bishop g5, and now you're going to play bishop e3. Makes sense. It makes absolute sense. you got to be ready for... Let me see. Can they do knight g4 afterwards? So if you're dropping bishop e3 MLS, I absolutely understand what you're saying. I do understand. Uh, we have to be prepared for knight g4 because f3 didn't happen. Normally in the Yugoslav, f3 happens, but it didn't. So knight b3, yeah, attacks with tempo. I did say knight b3. I absolutely did say knight b3. I did, I did. So knight b3, queen has to go. That's for sure. Queen must go. And probably going to go c7. I'm not sure you're going to go back. Not sure, but c7. You have to play c7. Queen c7. b6? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. If you play b6, you're blocking b5. So there's no point to play queen b6, but queen c7 makes sense. Queen c7 makes sense. Still able to push b7 to b5. And it's absolutely fine. So queen c7. Move the queen away. And then you're going to play b5. You're going to be forcing white probably to go a little bit defensive. Maybe d3, maybe e2. I don't know. We'll find out. So queen c7, my first uh, candidate move here. c7 i don't see why not sorry what, uh, is there anyone that would play queen d8 you guys would do queen d8 here first i don't want to get into the diagonal again into the idea with the bishop's diagonal i don't want to stay on the d file because i was there already and if possible i'd like to keep away from the d file And from the bishop diagonal. So maybe queen c7. And potentially if I play this guy, I might be hitting the bishop too. So queen c7 just for this reason. And others and, and other reasons too. So queen c7 would be my first choice here. I hope I'm not wrong. Yeah, queen c7. Queen c7, then probably you're going to play bishop somewhere. Or you coming with something else, or you're attacking. Knight, knight takes, bishop plays, maybe, maybe, but then this guy would be the happiest bishop ever. That bishop in the dragon or Dragadov is definitely something. So queen c7, and MLS says bishop takes, I understand. This guy plays. So queen c7, bishop takes, bishop takes. 
there is no knight f6. Is bishop f6? Then you probably want to say knight d5, right? MLS, that's what you wanted to say. So queen c7, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight d. Okay, queen to d or b, and then you're going to be losing the bishop. I understand. Knight takes, pawn takes. Pawn takes. I understand. I understand, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Well, I'm pretty sure that Ali Reza actually considers exactly this stuff. He's not keen to get rid of the bishop now on g7 because that bishop on g7 is actually the important stuff here. So that bishop on g7 is something you would like to keep in the dragon or dragodorfs that, that guy on g7. So probably you'd have to play differently then in lights of this, unless he's happy to give the bishop. And having this kind of pawn formation and the isolated guy, this is painful. That might be very well losing because the d6 guy is very much takeable now. I don't even know what to say. I don't like it in particular. So, tough one. Um, then what do we do? Queen d8 then. Queen d8, queen d8, queen d8, queen d8. Queen d8, and if bishop takes, bishop takes, knight d5, you go back on g7, and uh, yeah, that's what it is. Okay, d7, if bishop takes, bishop takes, knight d5, bishop g7, everyone's happy. I mean, not everyone's happy, but the bishop is where they're supposed to be. So, yeah, if you want to save the bishop, probably that's the sequence you need to play. Yeah, that's the sequence you have to play. That's indeed. Very quickly, Prague and Vidit. Oh, f6, the move. So what happened here? Hey, nice c4, I did say that. Last time I've seen the game, 10 minutes ago, I've highlighted knight c4. I think uh, Sadvik said knight b3, but I said knight c4 because I like attacking a bit more. So knight c4 was on the board, played by Prague. And knight e6 by Vidit. Queen d2, battery. f6. F6, stopping any any intention about the G5. And now Prague against turn. Is he going to cast a long short? Is he going to take the bishop? If you take the bishop, you give black a chance to connect all the pawns. So once you take on D6, they're going to be taken back with C takes D6. And all of a sudden, black has all the pawns connected. So knight takes D6 just on the board. Just happened, guys, as we speak. And now, if you don't take with the pawn, I don't understand anything. And nothing makes sense. If you don't take with the pawn, nothing makes sense anymore. I don't know why would you take with the queen here. Uh, so, yeah. Pawn has to take, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but CD6 is my interpretation here. Queen takes. Hey, what do you want me to say? Uh, queen takes, right? Sorry. Vidit uh, has a different plan. I think Vidit's plan is... I don't know what's Vidit's plan. This is weird. Sorry. Uh, aren't you supposed to take with the pawn? Okay. You took with the queen. Right. Okay. You may go queen b4. Okay. I mean, it's so weird. I don't know. Well, the knight was stopped regardless, Sadvik. So you could take with the CD. This guy wouldn't be coming here. Anytime. I really, I don't know. This is, uh, I would have taken with CD. Um, not the end of the world or anything, but... Anyway. That's Vidit, and uh, that's his choice, and that's what he did, and that is. That's it. Okay. Well, now he gotta be... Just a little bit careful about knight a4 and uh, bishop c5 ideas in case he castles and stuff. But probably at a knight a4 you're going to pull a b6 and game over. I mean, there's no bishop c5 anymore. b6 and there's nothing about a c5 going to happen, either knight nor bishop. 
So, yeah, I would have connected my pawns. I would have taken with C. Uh, 100... Uh, if you give me 100 games, I would have taken in all positions with C, D here. Uh, maybe he wants open files, of course. Semi-open files, Sadvik. Semi-open files. Yeah, yeah, he, he may want that. He may want that. Maybe he want to play some knight, and if they take, he wants to... I mean... Uh, yeah, okay. So Prague here can do castle short. He can do castle short. He can do castle long. He can do castle short and then push f4. Yeah, he can. Absolutely, he can. Um, Vidit can play bishop d7. Then again, castle long. Because the queen is here. That makes sense. Coming down with this pawn. So it depends what the white king is. If white king going to be short castled, I think we're going to see bishop d7 castle long and this guy is coming down the board. So, yeah, maybe he wants to get a rook also here. Maybe, you know, if I remember Sadvik's idea, maybe that's going to be something. Maybe that's going to be the case indeed. Let's see this, guys. What have we got? A knight d2. I did say knight d2 ages ago. Ages ago I said knight d2. Bishop c7. Well, that one seems incredibly natural. Knight D to F3. Feels incredibly natural. Let's find out. Um, or do you want to do something else? Hmm. Also, some Rook C, Bishop B, Queen C2 for this kind of stuff. I mean, it's very visible, it's very obvious, but it's something. Rook to see, but it takes, yeah, probably, maybe knight f3 first, maybe knight d2 f3. Black can play very many things, like very many things. And then maybe some rook c, bishop b1, queen c2, try get rid of this guy and checkmate them on h7. And the bus of gonna stop everything, of course. But at least it's a plan. And I think it's not a very, very, very bad one. I think it makes sense. Knight d2 f3. I think it's a good one. Hikaru and the boss of Hikaru has to decide now. 1 now 26, 1 now 27. Very, very, uh, pretty much similar. Same time management from these two. Yeah, f4 is playable too. Yeah, of course, I think f4. I don't think it's a bad stuff. Mm, yeah, I guess you can, but just feel something weird to move the pawn on the f file. It's just, uh, I don't know what to say. It's just the white king is here. You really want to push all the pawns up? I'm just feeling strange to push the f4. I understand what you're saying. I mean, this is my king here. Why would I? Okay, probably you can, but feels a bit weird. It's like you're sending the guardians away, the king's guardians away. So I'm not sure. You will be vulnerable along this file whenever something would happen. I don't know. I think it's playable, but I don't know. I gotta think about this one longer. I'm not sure I'm. I'm not, I'm not sure I would be doing f4 for white here. I, have, I would do knight df3. Because I want to play rook c, bishop b, and queen c2. That's what I would do. That's the plan I would have. I don't know what else works. It could be some other ideas working, but that's what I would do. And let's see what the other guys do. And of course, Ian Gukesh here. What did they do? Hold on a second. Yeah, I don't know who said you guys said Queen G3. MLS said Queen G3. And Sadvik said Queen G3. Bishop D6. And Bishop F4. And Bishop F4. Bishop F4. Bishop takes, Queen takes. And that's what it is for the time being. Probably 
probably we're gonna see now nine takes just make sure that guy disappears nine takes eight takes bishop b7 castle short i think it's gonna be a whoa there's a c7 stuff here so what do you play first nine takes eight takes and you have to do some ah and d6 and that's it and d6 yeah because you want to defend c7 right so correct me if i'm wrong but that works knight takes a takes d6 no more problem with c7 and you're gonna play the game like this probably a draw bishop gonna go on b7 i think bishop d6 right now he didn't take on b3 he could take it later if you want he played d6 right now okay i think you could do it in this order too guys d6 I had suggested initially knight takes and then d6, but Gukesh says, look, I can take your bishop later. So this guy can be taken later. Because he can't go anywhere. You can't go here, obviously. There's a pawn. So you can take it later. Especially if they play c3 or something, you can then take him. You know, so that might be an idea. Now with the white, what does Yan do? Well, you castle short. You just castle short. What else can you do? C3? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. C3 castle short. H4? I don't think so. I'm, I don't think so. Uh, rook AD? Maybe. Maybe you can rook d1, rook d3, rook g or something. You could do that one too. Oh man, long castle. You guess you can. I guess you can. Um, yeah, I guess you can. Uh, knight takes. You take with a. And then when they play something like C, they may have access with the queen to check you here. So if you do castle long, black knight takes, and if you take with A, after C6, I don't know where you're going. It could be something with queen A5 and checking you like this. So you have to take this into account if you castle long. Well, if queen a5, I guess you could go king b1 or something. I guess. Interesting. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it's playable, Castle Long. We'll find out, though. I'm going to leave the arrows here. I would consider, though, uh, rook ad, because I want to play this. But it could be very slow. And maybe castle short though. Mm, maybe castle short. I'm not feeling okay with castle long for white here. I just don't like it very much. Castle short, there you go. There you go, castle short. Just right now on the board as we spoke. Yeah, castle short. I would have played that one very likely. As well, I actually oscillated in between castle short and uh, rook ad and stuff. Uh, well, you can't do h because there is a bishop here, right? But you can do g3. So, okay, let's take it step by step. Let's take it step by step. Let's take this step by step and find out. Uh, we're gonna see a bishop for sure. We're gonna see a bishop b7. Maybe after knight takes b3. Maybe knight takes b3, a b, bishop b7. Probably we're going to see that one. And, um, okay. Uh, what did this do? Oh, what, 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 what? Oh, they traded. Wait a minute. Knight b3. Oh, my God. I thought he was supposed to do queen d. Man, those tactics are just so crazy. Queen takes. Now this. They are so crazy, these tactics. 
Bishop h6, obviously, you are going to take the bishop. You're going to take the bishop. Very unusual, Nidorf. You're going to take the bishop and Rook's going to take you. And that's what it is. You like it or not, that's what we got, folks. Can he do, actually, f or h rather than taking the bishop? Is there any difference? If you were to do f, let's just say f. Okay, we may consider h, but let's just consider f. If you do f, obviously black has to take you because you just took their queen, right? So if you do f, black must take the queen with the bishop, and you're going to take with the pawn, and you're going to be attacking this knight. Which knight has to go either d7, blocking the bishop, back on g8, painful stuff, or h7, attacking your pawn, which you may defend then pushing h. Difficult, but I guess it's doable, that one too. So let me tell you my plan. Uh, f, bishop takes, pawn takes, Ah, uh, heck, then they do this. You're not gonna like it. Nah, doesn't, doesn't look good. No, no, no. Uh, you have to take the bishop, after all. I guess, I guess you have to take the bishop. Queen takes, rook takes, and yeah. And then something like f3 to stop the black knight, or you're gonna play... You're going to play knight d5 for this fork, forcing the black knight to take you, and then bishop takes. Mm, could be. Possible, possible, possible. Mm. Yeah. No, I think, um, MLS, I think I would just go queen takes h6 now. Queen takes h6, rook takes h6, and you have to, you have to think if you want to do f3, or you just go straight with uh, what? You can't, no, you have to play f. No, you can play actually knight d5. They can't take one e4 because you do knight c7 check and fork. So then again, queen takes, rook takes, knight d5. Oops, knight d5. So queen takes, rook takes, knight d5. Queen takes, rook takes, knight d5. And you force black to take with the knight. And then you take with the bishop, I suspect. Then you take with the bishop. And it could be a draw then. If queens are off the board now and things, what else is here? What else is here? So, okay, queen takes h6. Is there something else than queen h6? Queen d2. Queen d2, bishop takes you. Do you want to have the black rook on h8 so that they castle short? Or do you want to have the rook on the awkward h6 square, MLS? I think that's a very important nuance. Hmm, I understand what you're saying. That's another element to consider. That's another little subtlety. I thought about h4, Sadvik. I did say, I think both h4 and f4 are a little bit of allowing black to play later on, knight g4, taking advantage of f2 and things. Um, I guess, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't like f4 and h4. Queen d2 said MLS here, but bishop's going to take, rook's going to take. Yeah, you will double, I guess, but I'm still towards, I'm inclined towards queen takes h6 because um, I want to get the black rook on h6 so that they can't castle short um, ML. So queen takes, rook takes, rook is on h6. I'm happy with that black rook on h6. And then I'm going to play knight d5. With white, that is. So yeah, queen takes h6 would be my, would be my option, I think. So black can't castle short. Yeah, that might be... Um, yeah, but the rook on h6 is very awkward. Rook on h6 is just super strange.
okay i guess it's survivable and i guess i guess it's getting really drawish right after queen h6 rook h6 is gonna get drawish step by step by step probably gonna get draw probably they're gonna draw my anticipation for this one my prediction is a draw here now because the queens are out and i don't see anything h4 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 bishop takes bishop takes pawn takes knight h7 attacking what do you play f4 okay they don't have to take you though just yet they don't have to take you just yet Uh, we'll see. Probably makes sense. Bishop g5, h, g. Where do you go with the knight? Can you go knight d7, then knight b6? Probably you can. Well, okay, they're gonna be, they're gonna play a long game here, and this should be a draw. After like, I don't know, 30, 40 more moves, we might have a draw here now. Yeah. This game lost all the juice and everything. Uh, so as soon as uh, they went for the queen's trade, as soon as Ali Reza opted for queen's trade, um, there's no more crazy tactics. I mean, it's getting really seriously simplified now. Um, we just very well go towards other games. Let's see what the other guys do. Yeah, so I don't know here. There's just... Yeah, I guess you can. Knight g4. I guess you can. Knight g4. Knight g4, f3. f3. Knight e3. Queen takes, bishop takes. Okay, that's more tactics to calculate. More tactics to calculate. Knight g4. f3. Knight e3. No, 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 no. The things are really getting really crazy. No. I don't know. It just starts feeling weird. Okay. Um, I would go bishop takes, pawn takes, and maybe knight d7. Yeah, maybe I would do this. Maybe I would do this. And then knight jumps on e5 or something, or on b6. I'm having prospects for the knight. Yeah, it's a bit more optimistic for white uh, MLS. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit more, it's a bit more, it's stronger, more positional advantageous for white. Yes, yeah, that's what I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit more advantageous for white from a positional point of view. It's not quite easy to capitalize on anything because there's no big weakness. Um, but yeah, I think it's a bit more advantageous for white if that were to happen with bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight d7. But probably a draw. Probably. Yeah. That's what is. It is what is, guys. It is what is. Um Prague and Vidit? Prague and Vidit. <clears throat> uh Queen takes, right? Uh backward move, backward move, 92, 92, 92. Hello, Hulk. 92. Uh, knight e2 for this and that. Knight 2 for knight g3, knight f5. Okay, okay. Uh, that will take some time. That will take some time. Knight e2, b6, either this or that. You name it. Either bishop b7 or bishop a6. One of these two. And also... Well, the bishop couldn't have come here, right? I mean, you can't do this. Hmm. They're just making space for the bishop. Creating a little bit of space. And Prague now can do many things. Prague can do castle short or castle long. You name it. Um, yeah, castle short or castle long. For white, I think that would be either this or that. Now, we're not playing now. We're going to play after the feeder candidates is over i guess in just a couple of days we'll be coming going back to some friendlies and the game analysis and puzzles so that's what i would say for white 
Short castle or long castle? Short castle, long castle. What else can I do? I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anything else. D4. D4. Yeah, D4. Pawn takes, knight takes. If knight takes, bishop or queen takes. So then we have a draw again. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, I will castle short, I guess. I think, okay, I will castle short here. I don't want to necessarily draw. I feel sadly that if you do D4, it's like you do more trades. You just do more trades. D4. Pawn takes. You must take. They take with the knight. It just feels getting more and more and more draw if you do this. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. But also when you play d4, you need to accept that after bishop a6, you kind of gave up on this diagonal, right? I think you could totally do this kind of stuff. Heck, MLS, you could do h3. You could do a3 if you really want to get into this kind of like waiting to move. Yeah, you can. I guess you can. Why not go h4? MLS, I mean, you have to accept that black might be doing castle long. You could do h4, MLS, just to discourage black from castling short. May I say that? So you do h4, kind of discourage black from castle short. f4. He went for f. No castling, no nothing, just f. Yeah, that looks better. Better than d4. I'm not keen on, again, I'm not super keen on trading. Pawn takes, knight takes. And if knight takes, I'm taking with the bishop attacking with tempo. I think they're probably even, even better. Still didn't decide, didn't commit about castling or anything. So f4, very nice. f4 takes, knight takes. If knight captures, bishop takes, attacking queen and c7. That is good. And then you may still... Decide if you want to go castle short, long castle, or none of these. I don't know. But it's absolutely fine, F4. Really, absolutely, absolutely fine. And we got to see another one, fellas. So that was Prague and Vidit. Prague and Vidit. Come on, guys. What's, uh, okay, Hikaru and Abasov. What did I say here? I said knight f3 and stuff. Knight f3. Queen f3. Ah. Very simple and effective. You're just taking here. Then if queen takes, you might be just grabbing a pawn. Hmm. If bishop takes and if pawn takes, they ruin the pawn's idea. So knight e7. Heck, aren't you supposed to take on f6 now? Aren't you supposed to take? MLS, you tell me honestly, you wouldn't take on F6 now. Is it bad to take on F6? Oh, rook F6. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, oh, sugar. Sorry, I forgot that knight e7 actually protects the protects the knight to the rook. Yeah, sorry, I, I really forgotten about that one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That that that's the reason he didn't take. I thought it's just the pawn now, and I didn't see why the hell he didn't take. Okay, b3. Okay, that changes everything. Of course you do not take on f6 now. Given the rook. Sorry, I just I thought the rook is on a8. You know, since last I visited, I don't even remember when the heck did the rook get on a6. And I just, I thought the rook is on a8. <laughs> okay, takes, takes. Okay, okay. Uh, that makes sense now. It definitely makes sense. Okay. I don't know, rook a b? Just play rook a b. What else can you play? Maybe rook okay, b, maybe, maybe what? Maybe. Or maybe a3 to stop this guy from coming down? Maybe a3. 
Maybe A3. Would you play A3 to fix the A4 pawn, guys? Do you think A3 is a thing here? A3 fix the A4 pawn. Mm. A3 or Rook AB. She, and it's something interesting here, guys. Hikaru is actually lower on time than Abasov. He's like one hour and something. The other guy, one hour 22. Okay. Mm, that's the only thing I can see here. It's either Rook AB or A3. I don't know how else can you rearrange stuff here. Where do you move the queen? The queen is already on f3. I think knight should have been on f3 rather than the queen. So again, rook a b, then maybe you can make a rook left and attack this guy twice. I'm not sure if you should be fixing the black pawn first with a3 and then rook a b1. So I'm oscillating in between a3, rook a b1 here for white. I don't I don't know what else I would play. Knight can't go anywhere. Unless you want to play knight f1, knight g3, which is again very, very weird. It kind of like g5 is possible then. It just looks so weird. Mm, a3, rook b1, probably one of these two. So let's go now to another game. Uh come on. Did I uh, press this button? Okay, Gukesh. Ian Gukesh. Bishop e6. Okay, fine. Rook fd. Why not rook a d? Mm, maybe he knows that black's gonna take on b. He wants to take with a, and he wanna keep. Uh, he wanna keep a rook on the a file. Maybe that's the reason he played rook fd. And it could be some others. But maybe that's one of them. Okay, rook e8. Always get a rook on the open or semi-open files. h3. Sure, now that's a waiting move. Oh, uh, okay, a waiting move. So there's no back rank issues in the future, future, future. h3, there is no bishop coming to g4 or anything for that matter. Well, there's just a bishop now. And, um... Uh, well, it looks like a draw now. Knight takes, you're gonna take with A. Bishop takes, you're gonna take with what? With the Rook? It's just a draw, right? You know, uh, Gukesh has the chance now to trade off all the minor pieces, uh, my friends. He could trade both Bishop and Knight. So they could come off the board. And they're going to an ending with the Queen and Rooks. Seven black pawns, seven white pawns. That's a draw, right? Knight takes, A takes, probably. It could be C, though. Or attacking the... Guys, you know something interesting? If knight takes, just a question for you, my friends. Would you take with A or C? I think you should consider also taking with C. Do you know why? Because you might play rook A, C and uh, looking at the uh, backward pawn. And if they push this backward pawn to c5 or something, then there is another backward pawn, as the d-pawn. So, actually, I think I've reconsidered. If knight takes b3, probably you should take with the c-pawn. Tell me what do you think about this plan idea. Uh, about this uh, idea, guys. Sadly, MLS, anyone else, if you guys want to voice your opinion, you tell me, guys, if you would take with c for the reason of rook a c1. For the reason of targeting the backward pawns. The c7, d6, these are the pawns I'm talking about. And um, I think I w on this occasion I would just take with the c pawn. So I can use the rook on the c. That's how I would, that's how I would play it now. I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense now. Knight b3, cb3, and I don't know what black's gonna do, but definitely rook a c1 is very, very playable. And excellent. 
stuff here. That will force black to trade the knight. And when they trade the knight, I will take with the rook. Again, the c7 and d6 are targetable. With the rooks and stuff. So that looking good if you were to play it like this. If, yeah, the c7 is one, one big target there. That's a backward pawn. That's a backward pawn. So I would advocate now if knight takes b3 for white to take back with the c pawn. Not with a anymore. Yeah, so that's that's what I would do. Now, not sure Gukesh should take the bishop on b3. I don't know what black's supposed to play. But Gukesh has also an option now to trade off the minor pieces if he wants to. Mm, yeah, what can I say? Could you do bishop takes first? And then if bishop takes c6... No, you can't. This is ridiculous. F7 is hanging. So bishop takes and you have to take with the pawn. Oh, oh, oh that's sweet. So guys, uh, if bishop e6 takes d5, you must take with either pawn or rook. Sorry, if bishop takes... No, bishop mustn't take. Okay, so bishop mustn't take. Because if, if black bishop takes... White is going to take with the bishop, attacking you on f7 and the rook. So you shouldn't take this knight, looks to me. So if you want to do some tradings, you should be starting with this guy. Knight takes b3. So we'll see about that. Knight b3. Then cb, and that's what it is. And then you could take. Um, okay. Probably a draw. Uh, let's go to Ali Reza now. With this guy still. Hey, Bishop E6. What is going on here? H4, Bishop E6. Okay, very unexpected. Very unexpected. He fought about this one, Bishop E6. If Bishop takes here. You're going to take with a pawn. Therefore, there is no knight on d5 that might be playing. That's important. Is this a draw? With the most correct... Well, probably it's... Yeah, of course, with the most correct game, it is always a draw, right? That's a truism. The most correct game always ends up in a draw. If both parties do correct moves. I'm not sure how... I mean, it looks a bit weird, right? To having... Um, g6 here but who's going to attack it and how because there is no light square bishop there is no queen soon to be there's no queen so probably he thought it's fine and then he's going to play king here king d7 he's going to play with the king on d no he's going to play with the king on f all right so bishop takes one takes and he's going to get the... no i don't know actually i don't know First thing first, I think I would capture. You capture, right? You can't go back. You can't just move d3 or e2. Right? I mean, you can't do this. Can you do knight d5? That one looks better. Knight d5. Can you do this? Knight d5, knight d5, knight d5. Knight d5 is good. I think I would play knight d5 here. Um, threatening c7, fork. Then they have to take my knight with something. What's that going to be? Probably bishop. Hmm, okay, so knight d5 would be my candidate move here for white. Knight d5. I'm attacking c7, forking king and rook. And if they take... First thing first, what exactly you take back with? If you take with the knight, I'm going to make a fork here. So I guess black's losing. So if knight d5, bishop must take. Bishop must take. Then I'll take back with the bishop. Then knight takes. Then what do you take? With the pawn or with the rook? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. So bishop must take. Yep, yep. 
exactly like MLS just said, and I I I agree with him. So knight d5, bishop takes, and I don't know, you take with a pawn. Well, the pawn is weird because you're blocking your bishop's diagonal. So you take back with a bishop. When knight takes you, what do you take with? Again, I don't know if it's pawn or is it rook. You have to take back for sure. Um, you have to take back. Maybe you take with the pawn. So you could then use the rooks like this. Maybe. But knight d5 anyway. Unless bishop b6 is something to this. Bishop b6, f takes, and then f3. Would you do that? I guess you can. Everything is blocked everywhere. Mm, yeah, I think that looks good too. But then again, it might be a draw. And that's what it is. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. F3. Nothing's going to happen. I mean, nothing should happen then. More than a draw. Yeah, okay. Bishop takes, f takes, f3. Everything is blocked everywhere, right? Almost. Almost. There's always a way around it. But I guess it's uh, controllable. Playable. Okay. Do you play king b1? No, you can't play king b1. No, 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 no. You... You've got to take first. You must take on e6 first. And after they take, you can explore if you want f3 or king b1. Because king b1 forces black to take your queen. So that's another element here. Bishop takes, pawn takes, and either f or b afterwards. And if you play king, bishop takes, pawn takes, and the knight has to go. But he can't go on g4 because you just played f3 previously. So I guess that might be a good sequence. Bishop e6, f e, f3. f3. And then. Might be 3. You're talking about knight c3, e2, f4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I like that uh, plan. That's a good plan. <clears throat> Very good plan. Yes. Makes a lot of sense. Because uh, MLS, both pawns are weak. And if you manage to get knight e2, knight f4, you're practically attacking both pawns at once. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a very good plan. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it, absolutely. So bishop takes first. Pawn takes. And then maybe you go knight e2. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and 4c5. True. Correct. Okay, you're going to play f3 anyway. So then again, it's a draw, right? I mean, it's not too much left now because we just keep trading stuff. And uh, it's no big weakness. There's no weakness. You got nothing to attack. I mean... Yeah, knight e2, but then after e5, you won't be able to. So, would you play knight d2 now? Do you think knight d2 might be an option here, forcing black to take? MLS, there's something interesting here. If you do knight d2, you're forcing black to take your queen. Right? You're forcing black to take because the king is no more the queen is no more pinned. So knight d2. Yeah, knight c3 is very good. But knight d2, you could play it. Because knight d2 means you're prompting black to taking your queen. Then you're gonna take. And then yeah, okay, they're gonna go G. Yeah, but uh not a big problem, I guess. Uh, I mean like um well, you have to defend f pawn. Oh, you can't have them all, can you? Okay, I don't know. Knight d2. Knight d2, bishop. Okay, knight d2 or bishop takes. I don't know which one is it. Or f3. One of these. Not easy. So even if you want to draw, still not easy. Actually, if I really wanted to draw, I would have played bishop takes e6. I... Yeah, just let's just trade stuff. 
Okay, this is a draw, probably. That's probably a draw. Probably a draw. Um, C5. Ooh, B6 then. Oh, we're going to go back to that idea you said. Actually, let me go back now because you just issued the thought and I want to have a very clear picture. Bishop E6, Knight D4. Bishop E6, Knight D4. What? Ah, I see, I see, I see. No, no, that's okay, that's okay. So bishop takes e6, f takes, and then knight d4. Yeah, but that's just going towards a draw, right? So I guess it's just it's just going towards a draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop takes 6, f takes e6, and then knight d4. Then probably knight takes, rook takes, and heck, it's probably getting a draw. I guess you can. I guess you can. Yeah. And we just have to draw. Yeah, if we keep trading, 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 probably we have to draw. And, yeah. Oh. Mm hmm. Yeah, it could be e5, exactly as you said. Then knight takes, then b takes. Yeah, it could be. But then again, it's still a draw, I guess. Still a draw. Still a draw. Uh, white to play. What do you do? That's so short. That's so short. Is there something else you would like to try here? Is there anything to this? Knight to d5. Mm, pretty much nothing. c6. Yeah, but that shuts off the bishop. So maybe bishop b7. Then maybe bishop b7. Then can we play c4? Mm, I don't like it. d3 is a backward pawn. Then they could cast a long attacking this guy twice. This feels weird. Mm, I don't know. Uh, probably castle short. Probably castle short here. Probably castle short. I think I will castle short. No, I don't like knight d5. Castle short, bishop e7. Or bishop a6. I'm not sure. We're going to have opposite side castling if... Uh, Castle short here. We might have castle long for black. It could be. Although, a4, a5 is definitely going to happen if castle long for black. That's exactly what white should be doing. So if your opponent castles, ideally, you know, especially if it's opposite side castling, you're on a race with your pawns, uh, where your opponent king is and try and just push them. See if you can make it a mess. Okay, so castle short, bishop a6. Then you want to move the rook again, just not to be on the bishop diagonal. So maybe rook fe1 afterwards. Then maybe rook a d1 and try to push d4, c3, d4. Okay, there's very, very, very many variables. It's so many. So many ifs and maybes. Very many ifs and maybes. Very many. Could you do queen e2 for this, though? Well, you can't do it now because you're going to lose your guy. Therefore, castle short first. So castle short first. And if you have a chance, queen e2 for this. Because the g6 doesn't work. Because you're going to take with knight. And if hg, you take the rook, right? So you might be forcing them to castle long. So then you can push a pawn. I mean, that's how I understand this position. Or white. Castle short and then queen e2 for the check. Yeah, it could be something. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, def so definitely it's worth considering. Of course they play a5. Of course they play a5. 
But if you manage to check on h5, it's very good. It's very good. They can't play g6, so they have to move the king, right? So let's see how it's going to happen. So could be, again, castle short, bishop a6, queen e2. And I guess black has to castle long right then there. Or castle short. So very many ifs and maybes. And there is no big weakness here for anyone. So they played very well, as we all had expected. And it's not, you don't see anything massively weak here. There's not the big weakness for anyone. So that's why it's not easy to spot how to attack or something. At least it's a plan. I'm, I, mean, I mean, I'm having this as a plan. Poor white. And this guy can go both b7 or a6. They're both very good. Especially b7. If castle short for white, bishop b7. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate. Yep. Yep. Uh, right, 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 right. Where were we? Uh, oh, absolutely. When you're committing to play pawn a6 or something, you're talking about bishop a6 or pawn a6? MLS, you're talking about uh, pawn or... Hey, what's this queen f2? Okay, dude, this is uh, unexpected, okay? They do that. Yeah, bishop a6, of course. But it's very flexible. It's very versatile. Uh, ML, it's very, it's very versatile. Bishop a6, if you got a problem, bishop b7 anytime. It's not a... And it's good to get a bishop. You have to develop bishop. Look, sooner or later, you will have to play the bishop. And Prague plays queen f2. Very unexpected. It is a bit unexpected. It's no clear... It's no clear way to do something... Devastating because there's no weakness that is. We could just see more tradings. After all, after all, I mean, yeah, bishop e6, bishop b7, absolutely, that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. Mm, it's just not clear. Maybe he want to do queen g3. You know, take, take, and take on g7, and eliciting some trades. Okay, so do you know what I think? It might be an intention here for white. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Could be queen g3. Uh, he wants to determine black to take the knight. Probably he wants to try that. And he tries to get an upper hand with, uh, if black takes with the knight, you're going to take with the bishop, you're going to take here, you're going to attack here, something like this. So queen g3 would be threatening g7 after knight takes on e6. So I guess that's the reason behind queen f2. Correct me if I'm wrong. MLS, what do you think about my, my interpretation? Do you think queen f2 actually means that Prague wants to do queen g3? Kind of forcing Vidit's hand to take on f4. You guess that might be the, that might be an idea. I don't see anything else. Yeah. So I think I think we probably thinking similarly on this occasion here. So yeah, queen g3 for exactly this reason. It tries to get a bit of a bit of an advantage here. Forcing black to take, maybe he grabs a pawn or something. So, queen f2 for queen g3. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's exactly what he want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Queen f2 for this idea. Yep. So, kind of forcing black to commit. Make a trade so that white can take with the bishop and attack the queen and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's gorgeous. This is a very good plan, I guess. 
That makes sense. I like it. I really like it. Yeah, th I mean, you aim to get Queen G3 because that's how you're actually forcing black with Queen G3 idea. Queen G3 looks for very many things. So that's the stuff. The stuff is actually Queen G3. And Bishop B7 or Bishop A6 don't modify too much your plan with Queen G3. Whatever black plays with the bishop, it does not stop you from playing Queen G3. And then black has to decide. Or let's say they have to decide now. Uh, yeah. That's nice. A very nice find by uh, Prague. I... I wouldn't thought about queen after queen g3, I guess. Uh, probably I would have castled, knowing myself. Uh, but that one looks uh, good. Good, I like it. Absolutely do like it. So, let's look at this guys now. Hey, uh, what happened here? I said this. He did knight f1 for knight g3, knight f5. No, for... No, 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 for knight e3, for knight e3. For knight e3. A3 played by black now. Rook B1. I said Rook B1 ages ago. So there's not going to be any... That's not going to be any Bishop B7 or anything. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, rook E6. Uh, strange, strange, strange. But... Um... That's a nice one. I think I like it. You want to mess up this knight and the pawns and everything. So, actually, that's looking good. Hey, that's looking good here for white. I think it's looking a bit better for white. A bit better for white. This last move was quite, quite, quite cool. I like this move so much. If you play knight g6, you're going to be knight f6. Check. You can't take with neither rook nor queen because there is a bishop. So pawn has to take. So that is really, really good. I like knight g4 very much. And it's also very difficult to spot this moves, guys. This, these backward moves are so tricky and so difficult to spot to do them at the right time. Normally, you don't want to withdraw your pieces from attack, but sometimes... When it's the when it's absolutely necessary, it's just great. So knight g4 looks really good now, really good, and a bit scary for Abasov. Poor Abasov didn't manage to win one single game this uh, FIDE candidates in ten rounds. He only drew or lost. So can you imagine how strong this FIDE candidate is? It's just crazy strong. Uh, it's 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 massively crazy strong. It's a super grandmaster of 2600 only managed to draw in 10 rounds and uh, lose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess knight h7. Uh, and then you're going to be in a bit of a pin. I guess you can. But you're in a pin. Is there something with knight takes h6 after knight h7? Just asking. Knight h7. Can I grab this guy? Then you take, and then I'm having, uh, feels interesting, very interesting. There is something brewing here. There is a lot of, uh, that's a beautiful bishop here. If you play defensively, I think white would be happy to attacking you. I'm not sure exactly not combination, but looks very good for white. I think the position is better for white. White does the attacking. And now black needs to think and decide. What do you play? What do you play about this? Because it's about knight takes f6. How do you deal with that? Can you reinforce it somehow? What do you actually play? Uh, that's, that's one little dilemma for a bass of over there. I don't I didn't manage to find anything satisfactorily. Maybe knight h7. Maybe you are correct after all. Nonetheless, maybe it's knight h7, but 
Knight at seven. Yeah, I guess you can. Then you have to be careful because your queen is your knight is pinned. Okay. Then if your knight is pinned, we might have this, that. Well, um no, you can't play this because the rook is hanging, right? Okay, so we can we can discard rook b5. Okay, but black needs to decide what to do about this pressure here. 97 maybe. Maybe. Then again, white has initiative. Maybe you want to take this. Very difficult. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what black's going to play. I don't know what black's going to play. Queen d6. Okay, I'll take with tempo. Check. Then I'm going to play bishop here. I think I'm doing okay. So if you play queen d6 now... I'm going to take f6 with tempo. Well, rook can take. That is true. That is true. Rook can take. True. True. No, wait a minute. I got a knight on f1. I have no problem with the, with the queen d6. Apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me neither. Me neither. I have absolutely no problem. Because knight on f1 just defends h2. No issue. Let them play queen d6 if they want to. Yep, yep. No, they got. They still have a major problem with this. Oh, absolutely! This guy here. Oof. I think Naka played knight f1 precisely in anticipation of a possible queen d6 battery with the bishop. I think he did that, knowing that very likely that's that might be happening. So that's the perfect prevention. There's no queen d6 happening anytime soon. It doesn't make any sense. So let's go to some other stuff. Nice, interesting one. Very interesting. Ian and Gukesh here. These guys were supposed to be... Oh, boy. He took with A because he plays C3. And now, of course, you got to take with A. Mm, okay, fine. Draw. Mm, now you have to take. Now you have to take. There you go. And, okay, guys, probably a draw. Yeah, probably a draw. Not over, you still have to invest a little bit, you have to think this one through, but probably a draw. Yeah, probably. I don't know, do you make a rook lift? Do you play, what do you play? You play rook down the board on the E file, what do you go? Do you go here, do you go here? Do you go something else? It could be some queen g4 for the checkmate on g7. And then you have to play queen f6, right? Rook e2. No, you're actually losing. No, that's a blunder, blunder, blunder. So if you do rook e2, you're going to be queen g4. And actually, you either get checkmated or you're losing your rook. So that's a massive blunder. That's a massive blunder. So rook e2 just loses. Disaster. You have to be so careful. But that doesn't work. That's actually losing. So, what do you do? A bit of pressure on the king side. I don't think it's that lethal, but you have to be careful. Queen d7 now. Okay, so that will be preventing any queen g4. Okay, so now he can play rook e2. Going for the b2. Because there is no queen g4, because you're going to trade the damn thing. Okay, there's no more danger for queen g4. There is no more danger for f7. You're doing absolutely fine with blank. If this queen takes, uh, probably a draw, right? Probably a draw. I mean, what do you think? There's all sorts of things. Rook f3, probably rook e7, probably rook e7, and there's just nothing. There's just nothing. Yeah, that's a draw. That is a draw, guys. I thought it's going to be more than a draw, but that looks very large-like. That's the only way. 
Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing here in this game. I don't see anything spectacular or unexpected happening here. Is there anything weird taking place here? Well, there is some weirdness. Bishop e6. What did we say? Bishop e2. Okay. King f... Okay, King f8 because the idea would be King g7. It's like as if you had castled. And yeah, then you free up your rooks. Could this be another draw? That might be another draw. Maybe. Um... What is white doing here? I don't see what other weaknesses, what other stuff you can go for. What else is here? F3. I mean, what do you play, actually? You play king B, they're going to take. And you're going to take. And if they play this, you're going to take. And if bishop going to play, you're going to play F3. Again, draw. So, again, king b1, bishop must take the queen, h g5. The most aggressive move would be knight to g4. That's the most aggressive move, to which bishop takes, bishop captures, f3, you send the bishop back, and again, there is kind of like nothing. You're going to play knight d4, attacking maybe bishop and knight, knight takes, rook takes, and you will try rook b4, to which they reply b5. And uh, well, probably in a, just a few more moves would be a draw down the road at some point. Yeah, king b1 and everything gets super simplified here. Unless Fabi sees something really special. So you could do f3 after all if you don't like to trade and stuff. You could do f3, king b1, one of these two. Or you take the bishop to making black rook going on h6. So that they need to spend a few tempi to get the rook back and then... Okay, that might be another plan. Another plan, take on h6, force black to take with the rook. So they will have to play king g7, rook h8, and rook back on either e or d or whatever you want to get the rook to. So that might be winning some tempo, and your opponent needs to waste some tempo to get the rook connected with the other rook on the back rank. Is that... Uh, does that make sense, MLS? Do you think that that might be something white to consider here? Just trying to see if you guys think similarly or you've discovered something else. I think that's so you're probably inclined to say queen takes h6 right for this very reasons we've, we, we've just explained um, just to determine your opponent wasting tempi until they get the rook actually Exactly right. Exactly right, my friend. Bingo. That doesn't affect the Valba probably not that much. You do not have any, any fabulous attack on anything. It's just a draw. Um, I don't really see anything fabulous here. If they play correctly now, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, an ID for to further trading. Yeah, further trading. Of course, further trading. Yeah, knight d4, knight takes, rook takes. You could play. I guess you could play. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. I agree, I agree. There's nothing wrong. You could do that one too. Still a draw though. Still a draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can put it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, We can, we can, we can. Knight d4, knight takes, rook takes. Maybe you manage to double up on the d a bit faster than normal. Yeah. Okay, you could, you could, you could, you could, totally. Mm -hmm. I like that idea as well. So I do like knight d4. 
but also we can consider i mean you could expect to see king b1 f3 uh king b1 maybe the last one so knight d4 queen h6 i think they're the two primary options here for white knight d4 with the purpose of doubling quicker on d and queen takes h6 with the purpose of making black wasting two more tempe but again i don't think there is a massive weakness uh f4 hey knight d4 your move brother f4 right now on the screen that's it knight d4 knight d4 your move which it made a lot of sense to me and i think this is just brilliant from this point of view. Yeah, absolutely. Knight d4, yeah. Knight d4, knight takes, rook takes. So knight has to take now, right? It's very likely they're going to take, right? Or bishop d7, just to make it really, really painfully slow. Um, do you know there is also bishop d7, right? I guess. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure due to some complications at some point. Mm, you gotta sit down now. 57 minutes for Ali Reza. He's gonna find something. He's gonna find something. Uh, but then again, I guess it's just yet another draw for these guys. Yet another draw, ladies and gents. I don't think, oops, I don't think there is anything. Um shockingly taking place yeah so that's what is let's see Prague and Vidit hey we have a long castling hey uh, uh, you remember this point MLS we were discussing here with Queen F2 Queen G3 Bishop B7 which we did say like a billion times we said Bishop B7 like very many times Knight takes though surprisingly not Knight not Queen G3 which I thought was the real deal. I thought queen g3 was the real deal. So he took. Now queen takes. b3. b3. Castle long. I don't know. Can we, can we just call it a draw? It's uh, one of those things that I just do not have too many ideas because I refuse to play it. <laughs> uh i just uh it just looks so unappealing apologies just looks so unappealing i don't want to play this i would just probably propose the other guy let's just make a draw forget about this um okay yeah sure of course you can insist a bit more but i i just don't like it i there are positions that i do not like particularly there's nothing exciting here there's just nothing taking place there's just nothing happening like nothing spectacular that is yeah okay castle short now opposite side castle um okay we might be seeing a to a4 we might see a4 we might see a5 uh, because there's just nothing else for white to play unless you want to be really really going for simplification and you're gonna put a queen f5 and that would be it so you know either move the king so now if Vidit wants to keep the queen on the board he he should play queen b king b8 because if you don't play king b8 prague's gonna play queen f5 forget about it, and the queens are gone that's it that was it that was it queens are gone and then you go very confidently with a to a4 a5 and probably a draw probably a draw again uh that's another draw guys uh, probably you would agree um so you either avoid trading the queens or i don't know what you want to do really i don't know what you want to do with black here do you want to do a5 with black probably you could go a5 but i don't know what you want to do a5 to prevent a4 a5 but maybe you can play a5 after white had played a4 maybe then you can play a5 and uh, that's another draw okay so i think this is a draw 
uh, Ali Reza Fabi draw. This one is a draw. Anasho Bao Nakamura Abasov. Let me see if that that doesn't look like a draw. That's not going to be a draw. Oh, not going to be a draw. No way, Jose. So Knight Turk, Pawn Turk, that doesn't look like a draw. Queen moved away from the pin, by the way. If anyone wonders what's the queen doing here, it's because they moved away from the pin. Queen goes away from the pin. And now Naka has to come up with something. Hey, can you win a pawn? No, you can't. There's double attack here. Pa no. What? No, if you take the knight, queen takes. You can't take the pawn because you're dropping the piece here. So, if you really decided to take and queen takes. Heck, I don't even know I want to take that knight anymore. I don't want to take the knight. I, maybe I want to play this, g5. Yeah, 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 exactly. It appeared on the screen as soon as I just voiced it. Yes, g5, that makes sense. That's something. Totally g5. Totally g5. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. Yes, g5. It could be some other stuff. It could be... It could be knight e3. Can it play knight e3? Or it's just incredibly slow. Because there is no more threatening the battery with the queen d6 and checkmate on h2. Can you play just knight e3? It's a bit painful keeping your knight on the back rank. I mean, the situation is quite looking good here. Why not get the other guy a bit more active? What do you think, MLS? Do you think knight e3 might be actually also a move to consider? Yeah, okay, g6. Yeah, uh, sorry, g5. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't deny g5. I don't deny g5 is really cool. It's really, really, really cool. Probably the most aggressive move here. Yeah, probably the most aggressive move, g5. Yeah, you're right. I think g5 first. g5 first. And um, yeah, you will play later. You will, you're going to do later, knight e3. I don't know what later means, but yeah. Totally. Yeah, g5. Okay, g5, yes. g5. g5. Let's see what black plays to g5. Can they do knight g6? Yeah, if possible to maintain the pressure whilst they are in a mess, that's probably the thing you should do. Every single time, yes. If you can make it a super, super messy for your opponent, you should do it when you have the opportunity. Because if you delay it, if you postpone it, it might be too late. And uh, you may not have another opportunity. So yeah, I, 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 I agree. I absolutely agree. Excellent, very insightful MLS as per uh, the last uh, sessions as well. You came up with a bunch of superb ideas. I'm very happy uh, you guys are so good at this. So yeah, Knight uh, E3 can wait. Uh, G5, I think, is the stuff. That looks incredibly, incredibly dangerous and uh, dangerous for black and very good for white. I like it, totally. So this one is not a draw. The previous one was a draw, but this one is not a draw. Vidit and uh, who's the other guy? Prague. Prague and Vidit was a draw, but I am such in a shock. Uh, MLS, I'm such in a shock, brother. Bishop G3. I mean, I, I kind of know why he did it. I kind of know. I mean, I understand why he did it. And my understanding is... When bishop takes, if they take, if they don't take, you're going to take, I get, I get how you say. So if bishop takes g3, you're going to take back with the knight. And your knight becomes more active. But I'm not fully convinced that g5 wasn't actually the real deal. So it just feels a bit, a bit mild. Um, it could be objectively not a bad move. But probably wasn't a, a, a knight the knight e3 was a, a weak move, you see. 
So, okay, just a bit mild, bishop g3, a bit mild, a bit slow. Definitely not the emotional impact of g5, and not the same impact. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Totally not the same thing. Uh, there is some other subtleties as well, MLS. If we had pushed g5 previously, rook might have taken. Rook might have taken. Then, no, 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 no. No, 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 g5 still, still, still very good. Uh, I don't know why he didn't opt for g5. I don't know. So this one doesn't look like a draw. Hikaru Ninja does not look like a draw. This one, let's see if that one is a draw. 336, 336. There is an isolated pawn on d6, though. Whose turn is it? Ian. Hmm. And there is something here about the f2 with the rook and the queen. So if you move the queen, it's got to be f4. Or it's got to be h4. One of these two. Or you take. So I think... Oh, heck, you can move the king, right? I mean, you could do a few things. Queen takes queen. Again, very draw. Uh, queen f4. Queen f4. Which I'm not very much excited about. I'm not very excited about. Queen h4. Again, I'm not excessively super excited about queen h4. Or king f1. Or can you play... No, you can't play. Rook g3 in order to checkmate would be, would be uh, queen takes. And then you're going to... Then you're going to have to take with the c and then you're going to end up with double pawns and then you're going to die very quickly because rook d2 or something king f1 rook a e8 yeah no no because uh, queen takes no 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 you don't do, you you don't do uh, after king f1 you don't do rook a what So if king f1 now, you cannot play this, right? Because you dropped the queen. So king f1, you have to do something else. You, maybe you want to say rook e2 back, which is frustrating, right? To get the rook back. Ah. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. 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 Of course, uh, king f1, queen takes, rook takes. What? Okay, e. Oh my god, you're talking about checkmate. If I take on a6, you actually checkmate on e1. Oh boy, that's a checkmate, right? So that will be a checkmate. Okay, if black queen takes the white queen, you're going to take back. And if you want to play king f1, yeah, of course, you can't do rook a6 because you probably you have to play g3 first. Yeah, but then you're losing on b. Oh, sugar, you're going to lose on b. When they lose on b, they get the other rook and they're going to hammer you very heavily on the second rank. Ugh, disgusting. So, yeah, I think we can uh, keep that one in suspension. I'm not sure about that thing. So... Mm, queen takes, rook takes, and king f1. I think that's how you could consider. Again, queen takes a7. Rook takes a7. King f1. But then again, rook comes to e7. And you're back to square one. G okay. Queen takes, rook takes. As we were discussing, guys. Queen takes, rook takes. Queen takes, rook takes. What do you play now? You just say to the other guy, let's make it a draw. Because you have to spend a lot of time to... Okay, this move B4 here moves away the B2 from the Black Rook's attack. It doesn't allow A5 to happen. A Rook on D3 still defends C3 and defends the D5. But then again, we have a draw. Then again, we have a draw here. What else is here? No, it's a draw, guys. Uh, this is another draw. 
We have draws everywhere except Nakamura Abasov. All of them are draws except that one. Prague Vida draw. Uh, Ian Pomnishi Gukesh draw. Fabi Alireza draw. Except Nakamura Abasov. Definitely Nepo Gukesh draw. Is it? Yeah, it's a draw, right? Yeah, what the heck, that's a draw. Yeah, I think you can play Rook A3 and just, there is so much nothing happening. It's so much nothing happening. I don't even know. Should you do G3 and if there is a doubling, you're going to take here. And if they take here, you're going to take, they're going to take, you're going to take. Hell, I don't know. Uh, it's a lot to calculate, but probably should be a draw at some point. Um, you still have to play super carefully, but well, if you do rook a3, nothing is going to take place. g3, king g2, something like that. I don't see anything anywhere. It's just so not exciting, this game. Nepo Gukesh plays something that is not exciting now. Not this game. I'm going to look less and less at that game. <laughs> I don't see anything. This one is a bit, a bit more exciting. So knight d4, MLS, you said knight d4. Knight takes, rook takes, rook c8, aligning the rook with the king. The rook is on the same c file with the king. Uh, Fabistan. Could we just move the king now? Let's just move the king away. The bishop takes, pawn takes, knight plays, bishop takes, bishop takes, f3. Still a draw, right? Still a draw. That's another draw, I guess. It's an interesting knight draw, but after queen a5 by Ali Reza, after queen a5, f4. Okay, now bishop must take. Bishop must take queen. Bishop must take queen. And what do you take with? It's a good h. If this, probably this, not necessarily, not necessarily. If knight g4, well, he can go places. I don't know. He'll go places. If knight g4, do you really have to take? I'm not sure. It could be bishop f4 afterwards. Knight g4, bishop f4. Okay, let's uh, hold our horses. There could be all sorts of things happening here. It could be all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think you did say F4. Yes, you did say F4. Like 15, 20 minutes ago, you did mention F4. You did, you did, you did. Yes. Yes. So, after all, knight g4 mustn't necessarily mean you have to take the knight. You could just play bishop f3, right? Um... Bishop f3 for this reason and something like that. Okay, now that's getting just a bit more interesting here. Nice, very nice indeed. Okay, Gukesh draw, Hikaru Basov not a draw, Ali Reza now still something, still some sparks in that game. Oh, but this one is just done, right? I did say queen a5, so rook a1, rook hf8. Okay, just getting the rooks on the semi-open files or on the files where you think pawns are going to be traded. Um, queen f5, attacking h7, and the queen. So Vidit now either plays queen g8 to defend here and refusing the trade for maybe this. I do not know. Ovidit takes, and rook takes, and then bishop f a c8, and then, and then draw, right? Mm, could be this kind of things. Or could be bishop f8 now. Bishop f8, queen takes, bishop takes. And then draw again, right? 
No, you can't play bishop f8 because you lose h7. So it's got to be queen g8 or queen takes. So probably queen takes. And if rook takes, and I think rook, rook should take, not the pawn. Although, nah, not the pawn, because if you take with the pawn, you're enabling this bishop. Very strong. So if black queen takes, you don't take with the pawn, because this bishop becomes really strong. So if queen takes, rook must take. But then we're going to have bishop c8. And rook has to go back. And there is really not, not, not too many things. He refused, though. Ah, oh, that's sweet. You can't take. This is the most poisonous pawn ever. If you take on h7, you are going to lose the game quickly. Bishop takes and rook plays, and you lost the game. You lost the game because rook and the queen do something very unpleasant on the h. And I'm not sure you're going to like it. So, no, you shouldn't take on h7 now. Very, very nice and very elegant how Vidit found this resource. So rather than trading queens, which probably many of us would do, uh, he didn't play queen g8, which would be maybe overly defensive. He did queen d6, which defends h7 indirectly. So I think white is seriously demotivated. Prague will not take on h7. And there is also bishop c8 that might attack the queen and forcing them to move, I don't know where, but definitely something. That's good. But then again, I think it's a draw. I think this is, I think this is a draw. I don't know what else it's here. Vidit a draw. We said Prague Vidit. Uh, Naka Abbasov here. That one, probably not a draw. Probably not a draw. This one is not a draw, right? MLS, this one is not a draw, right? That, that doesn't look like a draw. There is a lot of good things you could do. A lot of good things you could do. So first thing first, the knight has to... Oh, this guy is hanging. by me. You can't do knight e3 because c3 is hanging. You're actually losing. Oh, come on. Uh, oh, yeah, bishop d6 is so nice. So nice. And then probably this. Bishop d6 and then this. That is so nice. Hey, what about rook? Anything, but that's not a draw, right? So I think this one is not a draw. The rook b8 and... Doesn't look like a draw. Well, I'm not sure rook b8. Because queen is going to go. and uh, Well, you're taking takes. Uh, uh, I do not. Maybe first, as you said, maybe bishop d6 first. Then queen moves. Then you could play, I don't know, c5, b4. There's so many. Hey, actually, there's also a pawn here. Christ. Bishop d6 for probably this. Mm. Yeah, bishop d6. Yeah, so bishop d6, I think your initial idea is really strong. It's a direct way to target the pawn and keep the knight in a pin. It is very important to take that a3 pawn if you can. And bishop d6 really aims to do this. I think this actually is the move. Um, unless I think that is really the stuff. I like this one very much. Bishop d6. So I guess Naka should win after bishop d6. Yeah. Looking good for looking good for white. Probably he's going to win this. 
Yeah. And yes, of course, guys, we've got the Supreme Confirmation. They've agreed on a draw. And that was a draw for a long time. We knew. Yeah, they, they, they kept messing, kept messing for a while. What is this? Yeah, you, you know, you just start. Uh, what did they play? Rook E, Rook back rank, going for the C3, going for the A6. Rook takes, Rook takes, Rook takes, Rook takes, 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 takes. Takes, 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 and uh, takes again, and takes some more. Yeah, check. Takes a bit, yeah. Takes a bit, takes some more. Okay, uh, that one is a draw. We kind of knew that, ML. We kind of knew that. And I would say Prague and Vidit, we know, it should be a draw as well. This one is Fabiali Reza. Knight takes. Hey, um, so rook f to prevent knight f2, I guess. Oh, me oh, no, 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 no. Not just that. Not just that. A rook g d f because he want to push this. He wants to play f5. He wants to go f. That's exactly why he did rook f. Of course, preventing knight f2. If knight were to move here, well, that's a question. What do you play? Probably you're going to play this. And if knight goes back, well, I don't know. Um, what do you play if knight e3? I really want to know. So what do you play? Now, I understand Fabi's intention with rook f1, 4, pushing f5. I absolutely do understand. It's cool. It makes sense. It's very interesting. Knight e3 is a move with tempo, attacking your rook and g2. How do you react to this? How do you respond? You don't want to react because that's a knee-jerk reaction. You don't want to react in chess, as probably in life. You want to respond. So knight e3... And you're going to play like what? You, you, what? What are you going to play with white? If you play rook f2, can they go back on g? Probably this is Fabi saying I want to draw. Well, we kind of speculated that this one is going to be a draw as well, right? We did speculate it. The rook f3? What? Ninety three rook f3. Whoa, whoa. Wait a sec. Ninety three rook f3. Am I getting trapped with the knight? Knight takes g2. Rook g3. Oh. Bishop f1. Rook f3. Bishop f1. Uh, do I get trapped? Knight h4. Then I'm gonna get... What? Are you sure it's getting trapped? Are you sure it's getting trapped? Uh, it's a bit complicated and uh, I'm not sure it's getting trapped though. You can't really chase them with h3 because there is this guy, right? But maybe you can close it off first. Oh, you can close it off first. Oh yeah, I think it's trapped. I think it's trapped after like six moves or something. I think Black Knight is trapped MLS after like six moves. It's a complicated, it's a little tactic there. It's a little tactic. I think he might get trapped. And Ali Reza didn't play Rook E3. He played Bishop D7. 
And now probably Fabi gonna play King D2. Just to make sure there is no shenanigans from this guy. And then you're gonna push or you're gonna push now? Well, I don't know. I think one of these two though. It's either King D2, which means there's gonna be no knight on E3. Or we're gonna see F5. F5, right? F5 because you have the rook here. So you may just very well push the F pawn because you want to take on G6. And you want to, you know, check the king. So two candidate moves. F5, which is the most aggressive, or King D2. King D2 so that you don't have any headaches with knight E3 and stuff like that. Unless you've already made sure you've incorporated everything and uh, you go F fearlessly and confidently. F4 to F5. Knowing myself and my level of panicking, I would probably do King D2 first. I would do King D2 first and then I would go F5. Uh, just I I mean I mean I want to play this properly, so why not King D two? Also, also my friends, you want to move the king away from this C file. Just in any case, just in any case. So I guess you may want to try this. There is no E pawn going because this guy is hanging completely, so there is no. E coming down the board. So King D2, I don't know what black plays, but it's looking good for white, I guess. King D2, and then I'm going to play F5 if nothing else happens. And I think it's good for white. I think it's good for white. A bit better, maybe a bit better for white. I'm going to give it, okay, let's play a little game. Let's, uh, let's try and throw a, an eval, uh, let's make a, an eval bar anticipation. And then I'm going to put the eval bar. So let me, let me try to figure out an eval bar. And then I'm going to inquire. Knight it uh, triple black base. Knight 5 is very nice and sweet. It's a knight 5 is good because knight b6 as well. If I am to go back to your idea. So knight d5 is good also for this. Uh, first, I would like to play king d2, and then I'm going to investigate furthermore if knight d5 or f. So I'm going to think about this one. But yeah, it's great. Knight, so knight d5 is great. Knight d5 is great too. A lot of potential. A lot, a lot of attacking potential here with the knight d5 as well. So I would say... At this very moment, as we speak, my friends, I think the white, I would give it a uh, plus 0, 060. I would give it a plus 0, 060 for white here. It's, it's more attacking happening for white. That is why. It's just more positional attacking, more opportunities, a bit more initiative for white in terms of attacking. So now let's see. I'm going to play this game for a while. Hell, that was so damn close. Plus 0 0.57. I think I declare myself relatively happy with my level of eval bar. So MLS, we don't need an eval bar because we just said it. I mean, I said plus 0 0.60, right? There you go. Plus 0 0.57. So no one needs an eval bar. <laughs> we don't need an eval bar. We're very good at this anyway. Okay, so we got this one uh, very, very close. Very close. Indeed, yes. More positional attacking stuff for white. That's the reason, guys. Okay, I like it. And the ideas you guys produce are absolutely great. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, 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 we, uh, we're very close. We, we were very close. Our... Our internal evaluation bar is uh, we got enough experience to kind of like sense it and think it properly. And uh, that's good. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Initiative for Fabi. Fabi, great. Fabi might be pull a win here. 
He might be pulling a win. I'm telling you, it smells like he might be just winning. This one, okay, let's play uh, the same game here. Um, guys, let me think. Hmm. Oh, God, come on. This is uh, uh, minus 0 0.10. This just not to say 0, 0, 0. Minus 0 0.10. Reason minus 0 0.10, it's, and it's it makes me still very uh, unaffected. I'm very not excited about this game, so I'm just I don't know what to say because I don't like it very much. So, minus 0 0.10, it's just nothing taking place. It's interesting, but not that interesting anymore. Minus 0 0.10 or 0 0 0 or plus 0 0.10 i i just don't see anything taking place here the moment of truth yes <laughs> yeah we got this one so minus 0 0.05 okay that's uh, i was again very close yes very close again um we again we don't need any valba we definitely don't need any valba minus 0 0.05 if we don't need any Valba, neither the Super GMs commenting on other platforms, they don't need that either. So they shouldn't be using it. Okay. We got this one. So let's go for the third prediction in terms of the Valba and stuff. Now that, hey, uh, Naka didn't move a damn thing, eh? Bishop takes e6 and he didn't play nothing. Nothing. So let's throw an Eval here as well. Considering the current position, considering all the good ideas we discussed, I would give it a nice plus. But let me try and get the right assessment. 336, 336, isolated and stuff. Bishop d6. It's huge attacking opportunities. I would give it a plus, plus 120. Ooh, plus 2.8 MLS. Ooh, that's nice. I think you're not very far. I don't know. I'm just feeling it okay. Plus one, plus 120, plus 150. Plus 110, plus 120, plus 150. You give it a 2.8, 1.8. Okay, plus 1. 1.2, 1.5. Let's find out. Yeah, 1.2, 1. 1.5. 1. Uh, yes! <laughs> yeah, I got this one too. Yeah, we got it. We got it, mate. We got it. Yes. Uh, that wasn't the strongest, but we were considering, we were considering this. And I did say 1.20, 1.80. So I was very close again. Very, 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 very close. Yes, 1.4 right now. But because Naka plays whatever Naka plays, and that is Rook B7, the situation slightly got modified. Rook back. Okay, so we definitely do not need any Valbar because we're more than able to identify with with almost 100 percent accuracy the uh, force report in the game so we do get them that so that's another proof yet another proof my friends that we are able as humans again with the proper assessment and we're not even super grandmasters right with the proper assessment uh, with enough experience we are able to evaluate this one quite 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 accurately you know uh, especially when we converse out loud with your help uh, we are able to get the right evaluation which has been proved again and again it's not the first time we get this one it's not the first time pretty much all the time it happens there is no game in which we're not able to assess this stuff uh, quite accurately uh, of course if the game is incredibly wild we might need to sit down a bit more oh bishop d6 is the bigger threat here mls is the massive threat bishop d6 it's massive very big very big threat bishop d6 probably could have been played even previously with a super uh Big successive and, you know, greater, greater threat. Bishop d6 should have been played previously. Bishop d6, yeah. 
Definitely, definitely, totally. Oh yeah. Bishop on e6 doesn't do nothing. This guy is just existing there, doing nothing. Uh, okay, knight on f1 is not that great either. But bishop d6 is the monster that is. For all the reasons in the world, bishop d6 is a killer. Is a killer move. Is a killer move. Nakamura is winning this. Nakamura is winning this. Maybe Fabio wins against Ali Reza this evening. Uh, Nepo and Gukesh drew, and we knew they were going to draw from a very long time. We knew they were going to draw. Uh, this knight again, knight f1 can play probably here. But let's get rid of the, I mean, let's play bishop d6, threatening everything, and then uh, we're going to see what's going to happen. Bishop d6, knight d3. Uh, knight e 3 unless you are ready to dropping this guy you're ready to dropping c3 are you sure you want to do this maybe you want to play something else than knight e3 i i i i wouldn't give the c i well bishop d6 okay if you do bishop d6 Look, when you play bishop d6, I guess black kind of should resign, right? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Bishop d6. And if bishop d8, then you could play knight e3. Totally. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes a lot of sense. I totally agree. You may also explore bishop d6 and after bishop d8 you may explore bishop b8 maybe i'm not i'm not sure uh, perhaps i'm not sure perhaps uh perhaps we should just simplify the whole damn thing but you know bishop d6 bishop d8 as you said then bishop takes a3 let's just keep it nice and simple Let's just keep it nice and simple. I don't think we should be insisting unnecessarily. Let's just let's just take whatever's to be taken. Let's create a passer. Let's keep the tension. Let's see what happens. Um let's take on a3 first. Then we're gonna play knight e3. Then you know. Yeah, yeah, pretty much it took Zwang. Pretty much it took Zwang, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, uh, yeah, we could say that. Yeah, but I would like to take the a pawn so that I can just do a four and just go for the queen. That is, if Black doesn't just resign. So Bishop d six, Bishop d eight, Bishop takes a three. I guess Black should resign. I guess. Right. I don't see good moves for Black. I don't see any good moves. I don't see anything good for black after bishop d6. That's why I'm speculating probably a bus of just resigns. He just resigns, I guess. Uh, Fabi, Fabi Ali Reza here. Oh, what's this guy? Hey, king d2. We did say king d2. Do you remember, right? We speculated about knight d5, strong, f5, cool, but king d2. And I think I said during the stream that actually king d2 is the stuff you want to play just to make sure there is never a knight e3 and there is no king aligned with the black rook on the c file. So king d2 indeed, and I'm happy we were correct about this king d2. And I think you also advocated you supported king d2 move a lot. So king d2 definitely. That was my top move as well. Absolutely. So bishop c6 now makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Does that stop white from playing f5? No, it doesn't stop nothing. Would you do f5 here? Because I want to play f5 because I want to take on g6. 
this guy can't move down because the knight is gone, so the game is finished. So H can't be pushed down the board. Uh, you play F, there is no E happening because just you're gonna take stuff. There is no knight going anywhere. There is nothing meaningful Arireza can play, right? So you may just push F. F is devastating for black. It's very good for Fabi. And if you think there is something for black, please tell me. I really want to know. Can they play? No, after F5, what do they do? Really, what do they do? Uh, King G7, right? If you play f5, black out of desperation, they need to go out of the f file and they go g7. Then, then you take, then they take with a pawn. And well, we can start debating now. What the heck do we do? Um, I don't know, knight d5 to attack this. Probably this, yeah. Okay. So f5. Actually, f5. King g7. Knight d5. Yeah, I think in this fashion. Oh, well, that's another line. ML, that is another line. So, <coughs> if f5, we could indeed see rook g8. That might be. That might be too. Or the super crazy... No, 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 no. The super crazy rook h7 or something. I don't know. f5 is definitely something. Let black uh, getting crazy about this. So if you have advantage, if you do the attack, you play the move that you deem to be objectively correct, the best move, and let your opponent kill their minds with this. I mean, you just do f5 and let them go crazy about what to play. That's not your concern. A knight d5, that's the old idea that you've speculated. You did say about knight d5 uh, many times. That, what does that mean? That means that the king can't move. Well, they can, but they can only go here. You know, because this guy is hanging. That's superb. Knight d5. And knight d5 also, it makes black, I mean, it, 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 it makes them to take the knight and the bishop is their active piece. So if they take, thank you very much, right? With it, let's go have a look, the bro. Thank you very much for noticing. We're going to go back. So knight d5 is really good. It's really good. It's nice. It's sweet. Probably I would have played f5, but I don't think knight d5 is bad either. Let's go quickly to with it, because the brooks are something that with it might win. That was a dead draw. And the engine actually confirmed it was a dead draw. Queen, queen takes, and uh, I'm not seeing how Vidit wins. Okay, there is double pawn, but I don't know how you win with what with black. It could be a bit of an advantage here, but how exactly you're gonna win with black here? Mm, I think it's still draw. It's still a draw. You're not going to do anything spectacular with white. You're going to move up and down, right, left. And you're just going to sit down and just try not to blunder. Uh, what's the key for black to win? What's the plan? All I can see is that all black pawns are on dark squares. So I can attack them with my bishop. Bishop g4. Ah, okay. It, it, it may very well it may very well show advantage for black, but from a human point of view, how exactly are you gonna convert this stuff? Uh yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Bishop g4, h5, okay. No one's gonna touch that bishop and pawn. I wholeheartedly agree. He didn't play it though, he go, he went bishop e6. So even if you had played g4 and then h5 i still i sense something else is missing okay there is a from the engine's point of view 
maybe after 50 moves he wins or something. It's... I still don't see it as a human, how exactly you can capitalize on this. I don't know how you're winning here with either white or black. Um, I really, I don't see how you're winning, guys. Okay, it's double pawn on the G. Fine, 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 fine. There is uh, always bishop G4 and some H5. Okay, cool. That doesn't finish. That doesn't mean that you are going to win now. Okay, maybe a bit cramped. White is a bit cramped here. Okay. But there is still chess to play. Um, hmm. White doesn't have any big chances. You just need to play, try to play correctly, not to mess it up m uh, more than it is. I don't see how you're winning. White can't win, and black might win. Because of the pawn island here, which is superior to those double pawns. Well, what does that mean in human terms? A very long game. In which if you mess up one single step, obviously you lose. I don't know how you... Yeah, I don't know what you do with black. Um, probably Magnus would like to grind this one for like 100 years or something. Yeah, Magnus would love to do this uh, painful position here. Yeah, Magnus would love to be black here. That would be cool for him. He would be grinding this until we all getting white hair. You know, we're getting pensioners Antonio winning with black hair, yeah. We're getting 65 years old now. Or maybe not that much. Okay. It's, it's a little bit unappealing. It might be instructive. It might be instructive because, uh, you know, you may want to make it a lesson how you win against someone with double pawn on the G and you have a connected pawn island. FGH. Okay, it could be like a lesson. So, okay. You may look at this exactly uh, under this frame. You could, you could judge it like this. But not an easy win, and you still have to play very carefully. So, you may want to play with the king. Mm, yes, no, I'm not. I'm, I don't even know where to start with. I don't know what to start with. Uh, no, I would just propose a draw. Uh, I would accept draw here, white, black. I, I don't want to play this. I, I don't like it. I don't want to play this. If you black, what do you play? Bishop G, H5. And then what? And then really, then what? Then you're going to play... The, I mean, you have to be prepared to getting harassed by the bishop and... I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's move away. If there's anything taking place, we're going to know. We're going to see if there's any craziness happening. But that's just very unappealing. That game, Prague, Vidit, the most, the most unappealing game this evening. The guys uh, did an incredible tournament, but this game in particular this evening from Prague and Vidit, I don't like it that much. I don't like it. It's just so, so unattractive. This one looks better. Uh, Bishop f4. Okay, that one looks better. Surprisingly, he didn't do... Guys, I'm very surprised he didn't do Bishop d6. Well, it's black's turn anyway. So this one, knight. Okay, okay. so knight to c8 prevents black, uh, white to play Bishop d6. So you can't do Bishop d6 now. You can't do bishop d6, so you gotta re readjust. He keeps it with bishop f4. Ah! Oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. He played bishop f4 because he wanna make space for the knight to come into play like this. Right? And then maybe something else like, uh, heck, uh, where do you go? This? Um, maybe, and then bishop takes. Ah, okay, and then you wanna take this guy? Uh, I don't know. 
Bishop f4. Do you still want to push just g5? Ah. Oh, yeah. Do you? Uh, okay, maybe. Okay, maybe. The rook's gonna stay here. Maybe the rook's gonna go b8. Maybe. Uh, that's a shame he didn't manage to take on a3. G takes, takes, okay. Knight g3 and then push, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, okay, uh, last look here. F5, F5, F5 on the board as we speak. And Fabi has to think this one properly. Do you take Ampersand? If you guys haven't forgotten, that's now you can play Ampersand. Do you take Ampersand right now? If you don't, then what do you play? Ampersand, you take, they take Knight, you take with this, they take with this. Uh, still, still, you have to stay focused. Um, do you take, if you take, yeah, you create a passer, right? Yeah, you create a passer. Okay, that's, that's the move then. Um, he takes if, he takes f5. And then this guy takes. And it's so not over. But, hey. Either take or you take Ampersan. What else do you do? If you take here, if they take with the pawn, you remove the knight and then you win a pawn. Fine. Probably. If you take here, no, sorry, if you take Ampersan, they take with the knight. That's good too. Okay, look, the idea is for you to open up the F because you have the rook and that's where the black king is. So probably you have to take Ampersan, right? Okay, we'll think about this one. But anyway, oh boy, guys, it's been three hours in this stream now, and unfortunately, I have to wrap it up. Uh, so I'll be watching on my mobile screen, uh, and uh, probably you're gonna do it similarly, guys. And uh, tomorrow, Tuesday evening, maybe you guys are gonna come back, and uh, we're gonna hang around uh, for a while together with your magnificent insights. We should be able to. Uh, do chess without any eval bar <laughs> and uh that's just great so thank you again uh mls thank you very much simpson if you're still there thank you the group and uh anyone else if i miss them apologies and i'm very grateful guys you stopped by this evening and i shall see you next time which i hope very much would be tomorrow evening again uh 7 30 8 p.m uk time i'm gonna be uh, putting the camera on for the round number 11. All right, fellas. Well, thank you for your insights. You guys uh, know more than me. And uh, the ideas that you suggested in particular, MLS, were just great. All the good stuff you said was just phenomenal. And uh, many good predictions from, from you, my friends. And it's great. Thank you. Take care, guys. See you soon.